Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from Middle Test Courses 105. This is with Sunakhatta, also known as Sunakhatta Sutta. Uh, the link to the discourse is given in the description. This is an important discourse, this is an interesting discourse. Uh, where uh, the context is that Buddha was staying near Vesali and at that time several mendicants uh, in the Sangha uh, of Buddha had declared their enlightenment in, in Buddha's presence. And they said that our rebirth has ended, spiritual journey has been completed. So uh, Sunakhatta, the Lichvi, heard about this and he went to the Buddha and asked that uh, I have heard that several mendicants in your Sangha have declared their enlightenment. I trust they did so rightly or are there some who declared the enlightenment out of poor estimation, right? So he asked this question. So Buddha said some of them did rightly so and some uh, others did out of overestimation. And then Buddha is basically kind of uh, telling that and, and then Buddha said that for mendicants who declared enlightenment out of overestimation, they realized one thing, I should teach them the Dhamma. That means Buddha says that I should teach them the Dhamma again that uh, basically what is stopping your enlightenment, right? Now, he, after this, Buddha has given in this discourse some seven, eight, seven situations, right? Where the person, so basically the person thinks that they have got enlightened, right? But they have, their actions are not congruent. They have not yet given up the, the you know, desires and temptations and, you know, they have not restrained their senses. So Buddha is now giving, explaining this, so there are a lot of analogies, uh, similes that you will find in this. For every situation, Buddha is explaining it through a kind of a simile. So let us come to that first situation. Buddha says, first Buddha says the five kinds of sti sensual stimulation. So if you have like checked my previous videos on the suttas, you know by clearly what Buddha says is five sights known by the eye that are likable, uh, sounds, taste, touch, smell, right? Five sense sensual stimulations, right? Okay. Now, situation one is that Buddha says it is possible that certain individual may be intent on worldly pleasures. He engages in, in pleasant conversation, thinking and considering in light with that. They associate with the same kind of person. That means, and, and if when a talk is connected with the un imperturbable, that means uh, realization or enlightenment, then they are not interested. Right? So, Buddha is talking about that one person. And uh, the, the first situation, right? So, so that's the first thing. So the, the analogy here Buddha is giving is that person who leaves his own village a uh, long time ago and he finds another person who has recently come from the village. So all they talk about is that particular village, whether everything is fine and all. Similarly, those who are intent on worldly pleasures, they keep discussing about the worldly pleasures and they are not interested in anything else. Right? Okay. Then... A uh, second situation is certain individual may be intent on the imperturbable, uh, means a uh, final realization or awakening. Such in individual engages in pertinent con conversation uh, uh, about the imperturbable, right? But if someone talks about worldly pleasures, they are not interested because their mind is towards that. Here, Buddha is giving a, a simile of a leaf. Suppose there is a fallen leaf, a leaf which is fallen withered, it is incapable of becoming green again. In the same way, an individual intent on the imperturbable has dropped the connection with worldly pleasures of the flesh. right? And they are detached from the things connected with the pleasures of the flesh. Second, so that's the second situation. Third is a person who is intent on the dimension of nothingness. That is, he, does, he is intent only to reach that dimension of nothingness. So that is the third. So they only talk about that. right? So here Buddha is giving the analogy of a rock. A rock has been broken in half. So it could not be put back together. In the same way, individual intent on the dimension of nothingness has broken the connection with the imperturbable and they keep only discussing with the that dimension. Fourth is, situation is, individual may be intent on the dimension of neither perception nor nor perception. They keep on discussing with that. Right? Uh, now, example, Buddha is, for this, Buddha is giving an analogy of someone vomiting the food. And if some, someone vomits the food, that they have eaten, they would not eat that food again because it becomes repulsive. Similarly, they anything else, they don't want to discuss. It becomes repulsive for them. They are only focused at that. So basically, Buddha is trying to bring about this thing that our mind has this tendency to get attached with what we want. So it may be worldly pleasures. It may be reaching a specific kind of a um, spiritual attainment, some you know spiritual state, right? All across 
you know our mind kind of clings to small 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 things even going up to the third of the option uh, there also in a very deep meditative states also the mind can get attached to something so we need to understand and realize this tendency of the mind to keep that it keeps attaching clinging then situation 5 is certain individual may be rightly intent on extinguishment okay right okay rightly intent on extinguishment and he engages in pertinent conversation they associate with that kind of person but when a talk commenced with a dimension of neither perception nor nor perception they don't want to listen the analogy here is of a palm tree with its crown cut off it's incapable of further growth in the same way individual rightly intent on extinguishment has cut off the connection with the dimension of neither perception nor not perception okay situation 6 uh, uh the person says as the buddha has said that craving is a dart and the poison of ignorance is inflicted by desire i have given up the dart of craving and expelled the poison of ignorance have i am rightly intent on extinguishment but that person is not right in the sense it's not based on facts still they engage in things unconducive to in uh, Uh, to enlightenment that means they engage in unsuitable sign sights sound smell taste touches it's like worldly pleasures they keep engaging doing so lust infects their mind resulting in death or deadly pain so there here buddha is giving this analogy that some someone who is stuck by an arrow thickly smeared by poison the friends take him to a surgeon the surgeon rec- recovers this thing and says that good man the dart has been extracted poison expelled without residue it's not in cap is now in cap it's not capable of harming you eat only suitable food don't eat unsuitable food or else the wound may get infected regularly wash the wound and anoint the opening or else it'll get covered with pus and blood don't walk too much in the wind and sun or else dust dust and dirt will infect take care of the wound may good sir heal it now the person says that uh, the dart has been extracted it is not capable of harming me and they start eating unsuitable food and they start walking and they start going out and you know whatever the doctor has said is they do opposite so what happens it results in death or deadly pain right so what is the death death is resigning the training of the sangha moving back to a homely life resigning to a lesser life deadly pain is to commit one of the corrupt offenses something a corrupt offense which may lead one to uh, expelling from the sangha so death or deadly pain can result situation 7 is certain mendicant thing that ascetic the buddha has has said that the craving is a dart poison of ignorance is inflicted i have given up the dart and they are rightly intent on extinguishment they don't engage in things unconducive to extin- extin- extinguishment that is they do not uh, engage in unsuitable sights sounds smell taste so this is again an example that the man who was hit with an arrow the surgeon cleared the 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 wound and he says take care all precaution and he takes all the precautions right so now coming back to the 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 para understand this the buddha says i have made up this simile to make a point and this is the point the wound when we talk about the wound wound is the term for the six interior sense fields right which bind us right uh, poison is the term for ignorance so the arrow covered with poison is ignorance dart is a term for craving probing right is a term for mindfulness that means when buddha says here that the surgeon would cut open the wound with a scalpel scalpel is wisdom probe for the arrow extract it and expel the poison poison of ignorance leaving no residue behind probing is a term for mindfulness scalpel is the term for noble wisdom field surgeon is the term for the realized one is for the term of the buddha right who has given us this knowledge and who has done this work the perfected one the fully awakened buddha truly sunakatta that mendicant practices restraint regarding the six fields of contact understanding that attachment is the root of suffering they are freed with the ending of attachments it's not possible they would apply their body or interest in them of in the their mind body or interest their mind in any attachment so knowing that this attachment is giving me suffering that person will not kind of engage themselves right with that now buddha is giving two analogies one is a bronze cup of beverage a very nice bronze cup or you can think of a golden cup which has poison so a person who wants to be happy and who recoils from pain he would not drink that from the cup no even if it's a bronze or a golden cup 
because they know it's poison second analogy is that of a lethal viper right viper is a poisonous snake a person who doesn't want to die would not give his hand or would not give his body or finger to that lethal viper similarly we should not give ourselves to you know these sense objects right the desires and sense objects and attachments so buddha says in the same way sunakatta that mendicant practices restraint regarding the six fields of contact understanding that the attachment is the root of suffering they are freed with the ending of attachments it's not possible that they would apply their body or interest their mind in any attachment right so basically it's all about giving up attachment restraining the sense fields if we want to get free from suffering and uh, uh, kind of uh, making our actions congruent with our intent of enlightenment right so as a lay people howsoever less we can do it do it we cannot be like monks and we cannot be totally free from all the sense objects but to, to whatever extent we can do in our lay life we should do and we should also practice vipassana meditation on a regular basis which gives us you know that ability to see the impermanence of all the things uh, which otherwise would bind us so i hope this was useful do share your thoughts insights in the comment section namo buddhaya